So this is our landlord Paul and he's helping us girls to clean up the mold in the bathroom. There's no mold. You girls never clean. <laughs> Come on, don't say that you in front of the camera. Know. I will cut it out. No, this was, I fixed this. Okay, thank you so, so much. So Z can have best shower in whole USA. Oh my God, I love you, Paul. He's a very good landlord. Give number, you one, up. Yes. number one landlord, number one tenant. Do you want to, me to put the link up below so people can no. go to your track list and you know? No, find... I don't need no more. I, have, I never have problem with tenants because I am best landlord in the whole world. Yes. From the oh potential. The first genetic added baby. People at some point are going to pull the Nazi card in, right? What's up? So today is uh, Thursday. Chen Hao and I are going to take SE, SEM images of our samples. So we're from chemistry department, but unfortunately, I mean, we have four and more, and we recently just got APR. It's really expensive, but we don't have any electron uh, microscope. So we have to almost like cross half of the campus to the physics building uh, for taking the SEM. But it is, it is what it is. It's okay. It's actually a little bit fun that you got the opportunity to uh, get out of the lab and you know, just like walking in the campus, breathe some fresh air and relax a little bit. Now I'm working in a Boston College campus. I'm actually going to the lab. But today we have a football game and look at the crowd. Whenever that during the football season uh, that I have to go to the lab, I have to ignore all the excitement from the oh contestants. <laughs> yes, I am. And everybody else is happy. And you know, sometimes I have to carry my lunch bag and just like uh, put my head down, pretend, you know, I'm still living a happy life as a PhD student. But I'm just like so happy, like still to see that so many people come to our campus and enjoy the great day. Uh, so today I'm just going to write my thesis and then uh, maybe I will have dinner with my friends. Or maybe not, depends on how long it takes me for finishing the chapter that I'm planning to finish today. So I'll see you guys. talking about the first maybe genetic maybe. added baby that was born in China. They were having some kind of like conflicted argument. I think you mentioned like revolution. No, the human, human table was just going to be so I'm a camera and I'm going to This is going to make me so unpopular. But I, <laughs> I was just basically saying to her that, that we already have a human table right now, right? Because I mean, so right now, we, because we can constantly keep people healthy and reproductive, uh, reproductive 
with medicine, even though they have genetic diseases, they can keep incorporating, we keep incorporating more and more genetic diseases into the human genome as a whole, which is, by novel evolution, that would have been selected away. How do you know? That's how normal evolution works. Right? I mean, this is just evolution principle. Excluding the bad genes. Excluding, excluding the bad genes that wouldn't have, have, all the genes that wouldn't have reproduced before are now reproducing, right? No, but so the point I'm trying to make is it's not different now. Mutations. Yeah. What do you mean? These are no mutations. But it see, I mean, I'll get to that. So I'm just saying at the moment we are incorporating developing more and more a human species that is more and more dependent on what is some kind of pharmaceutical addition or additive, something that actually keeps us alive or keeps us reproducible. Because that's, that's, that's how it incorporates right? Exactly. So now, we're, as a natural biological species, we're going to be less and less capable of basically managing by ourselves without having to use some kind of constant medication. The fact that we're actually incorporating more and more of that, yeah, that's what I call the devolution, because what would have happened with the evolutionary process, that wouldn't have been incorporated. However, now it's, uh, now it's happening because of our medical capabilities. Therefore, it's not evolving. The human body, the bio, the biology is not evolving anymore, it's devolving. Anymore. The idea that what we're trying to do now with medicine is just like trying to like prolonging people lives without improving it. It's something that is wrong, and we all agree that it's wrong, and we all agree that it's horrible to miss a kid by night or to have that kid going into blood transfusion every single month throughout their lives. So, this okay. is my point. Now we can talk about energy uh, conservation, whatever you want to be. Now we have to put in constant increased resources to compensate for this bad development. It is not, if you can, you can separate these two things. One of them, definitely, I would say is a strength evolution, where you're making the biology stronger, you're making the species stronger, you're making the culture stronger, whatever you want to call it, strong enough so you can actually cope with the fact that we're at the same time incorporating things that makes it weaker. And you can separate these two things. I would say one of them, fair enough, you can describe that as an evolution. But I will still say the other one here is a devolution of the genome. It's a devolution of the biological species because it turns weaker, more painful, and it's becoming less adequate to actually uh, do by itself. Because now exact, that's exactly why this is not a popular uh, topic. Because this is unethical to talk about we can uh, that's right and healthy genes. But, yeah, exactly. No, no, but it is. This is actually one of the reasons I sometimes worry about actually taking this subject up because you're gonna, people are sometimes going to pull the Nazi card, right? No, I mean, you're trying to pull the Nazi card. I mean, but the fact so, that I'm in that. I think the point is like, I'm talking.